this is a cheap PC with a cheap GPU, and this is an expensive PC with an expensive GPU. Everything is in perfect balance, as it should be. But wait, wait a second. Uh, wh what are you doing? You can't do that. A cheap PC with an expensive GPU? And an expensive PC with a, a cheap GPU? What are you, a bad man? God help us all. Hi there, I'm TechDweeb, welcome. Thanks for clicking on the video today. We all have our priorities in life. Well, we can't get all of the best of the best of everything. Even Jeff Bezos doesn't get everything he wants. There are people who don't mind having a crappy house that's all falling apart and messy if it means that they can have a shiny, fancy sportsmobile. And the opposite is true. Some people don't care about cars. They just drive an old rundown jalopy. And they're fine with that because they live in a really nice house with feature walls and RGB smart toilets. And that's one of the best things about life. Apart from TechDweeb on YouTube, of course. It's amazing that we can all focus on what's important to us and get what we want and ignore the rest of the useless garbage. Which brings me to this little experiment that I've wanted to do for a long time, but I was so busy with all sorts of important stuff and I had to mow the lawn and organize my magic cards. I've just been so busy, you guys. But no more excuses. We're doing it today. I have two computers here. This one is crappy. It's a, it's a super budget PC that I, I built using parts that I bought from AliExpress. It has an i5 3570 processor in a salvaged Chinese B75 motherboard, 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM clocked at 1600 megahertz, and the GPU that I have in here is the famous but pretty old and underpowered GTX 750 Ti. And this one here is really good. It's, it's my main PC with a Ryzen 9 5950X and an X570 motherboard, 64 gigabytes of DDDDR4 RAM clocked at 3600 megahertz. And the GPU is usually my 4070 Ti, but that, that's not going to work for this experiment for lots of big reasons. So um, we're going to go with my backup GPU, the RTX 3060 Ti. So here's the experiment. We're going to swap the GPUs of these bad boys. This little budget AliExpress PC is going to get a nice new 3060 Ti. And my big badass gaming PC is going to get the weak old 750 Ti. And we're going to answer the age old question that I don't think anybody except me asked. But it's still a good question if I do say so myself. What is better? A, a cheap PC with an expensive GPU or an expensive PC with a cheap GPU? Pause the video now and leave your uh, prediction in the comments below. You go ahead and do that, I'll wait. Just kidding. Starting off as always with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We're gonna do our cheap PC with the expensive GPU first. This is running at 1080p native with the lowest preset and by the end of this run I got 73 FPS on average which is uh, totally a good average frame rate. You could definitely play the game like this and have a great time, obviously. But those 1% lows were <laughs> pretty terrible. Just 6 FPS 1% lows by the end of this run. And that's because, look at our CPU usage. We're pegged at 100% CPU usage the entire time which usually results in stutters. There are, there are lots of reasons that stutters happen, but having an overburdened CPU is definitely one of them. I've found that any time a CPU's usage goes over 50% in any game, you can expect stutters. Even, even if the average FPS is great, you're still going to get some jumpy behavior. So that's not ideal, but how did our expensive PC with a cheap GPU do? Well, a lot worse, actually. I'm running all these tests with the same exact settings, by the way. 1080p low settings here. And on our badass PC with the cheap GPU, Tomb Raider is struggling. It's not great. We only got 25 FPS on average. That's not how you want to play a game like this. At the very least, you want 30 FPS, right? The little 750 Ti is pegged at 100% the whole time. And look at that CPU usage. The, the 5950X is barely doing anything. The one saving grace is the 1% lows. 
they're higher on our good PC with the cheap GPU. So even though the FPS wasn't as high, at least it wasn't as stuttery. I'd still probably choose the first option though, the, the cheap PC with a good GPU. The stutters aren't great, but I could live with them if the FPS is high enough. And there is stuff you could do about the stutters. You could lock your frame rate to clear those up, which is what I probably do in this situation. I'm not, I'm not going to get into that in this video though. I uh, do intend to do another video about uh, that topic, stutters and how to fix them. So uh, get subscribed so you don't miss that. Next up we have Doom Eternal. 1080p native with the lowest settings. Our cheap PC with the expensive GPU did uh, not too bad, all things considered. It's running really good, uh, 119 FPS on average. The CPU usage was pretty darn high. It was in the high 90s nearly 100% of the entire time. And our 1% lows did suffer a bit. Not nearly as bad as Tomb Raider, but we only managed 63 FPS 1% lows. Which, which I have no problem with, you know? 1% lows above 60 FPS are barely noticeable. So this is a big win here, even though that i5-3570 is grinding away with all its might, it was enough to make this game run really, really well. Uh, don't get me wrong, the CPU is definitely holding us back. We would have gotten way more FPS on a good PC with a good CPU, but in Doom Eternal at least, adding a good GPU to a cheap old PC isn't the worst idea in the world. What is a terrible idea is adding a cheap GPU to an expensive PC and expecting to play Doom Eternal good. Oh man, what a terrible experience. Uh, first of all, just like in Tomb Raider, that CPU is doing basically nothing. It's, it's just cruised along at like 6% the whole time. And the GPU is struggling. By the end of this, we only got 26 FPS on average with a pretty terrible 18 FPS 1% low figure. And oh my god, the input lag, you guys. You, you probably can't see it on the screen. It probably looks adorable to you, but my keyboard is doing super weird things here. It's like taking an entire second to register the inputs. This was not what I was expecting considering that inputs are usually done through the system bus and processed by the CPU. There's something uh, weird going on in uh, Doom Eternal here with this uh, configuration. So yeah, this is a, a no-brainer. A cheap PC with a good GPU is going to serve you way better than a good PC with a cheap GPU in Doom Eternal. The GPU is king when it comes to gaming. Uh, to a point, obviously. You do need a CPU you that can at least handle the games that you want to play. Doom was better than Tomb Raider, but as you saw, they both had pretty different performance in terms of stutters. So some games just need more CPU horsepower than others. Okay, so those were more modern games with some pretty nice looking graphics. So let's try a more CPU intensive game that does not need to be played with the bestest best graphics. CSGO, of course. This is running at 1080p with the lowest competitive settings and our cheap PC with the good GPU actually did okay, but not as good as I was expecting. We got 141 FPS on average with 65 FPS 1% lows. Now, don't get me wrong, this is absolutely playable like this, but this GPU you paired with a good CPU should be able to do like three times this FPS at these settings. But look at this. For the first time, we don't have the CPU or the GPU maxed out. It's actually relatively balanced. I don't think that that means that these are running optimally. <laughs> if anything, they're probably holding each other back a little. But let, let's give credit where credit's due. This is working fine here. But uh, this I was super curious about. You know, if, if the game is more CPU intensive, what happens when we give it all the CPU that it could want, but the GPU isn't up to the task? Well, this was a big surprise. This is the first game where our good PC with the cheap GPU actually pulled out ahead. We got 156 FPS on average, which is much better. And those 1% lows are quite a bit higher. 87 FPS, 1% lows. The game is actually buttery smooth as well. It feels great playing like this. <laughs> Who'd have thunk the dusty old cheap 750 Ti would be able to give us such a good gaming experience? I mean, it's CSGO. It's, it's not a modern game, but it's still the most played game on Steam. And uh, apparently any old potato GPU will be able to do the job and uh, 
deliver a high refresh rate experience. And I guess that these results shouldn't be surprising. <laughs> this is a more CPU intensive game, so you'd expect the PC with a good CPU will actually do better. But uh, going into this test, I wasn't expecting the 750 Ti to be able to beat out the 3060 Ti in any of our tests today. I thought it was too old and slow and it would hold back the CPU in every single title. So uh, it's, it's not so cut and dry after all, I guess. And let's see how how the rest of these tests play out. On to the famous GTA 5, which is an older title and it's more CPU dependent in my experience. Uh, we're running at 1080p lowest settings. Our cheap PC with a good GPU did fine. 90 FPS on average with 59 FPS 1% lows by the end of my little benchmark uh, rampage. And again, we actually have a sort of balanced usage. The CPU is working hard. It's between 80 and 90% most of the time, but it's not like in the more modern games where it's screaming away at 100% while the GPU is barely doing anything. GTA 5 is an easy game to run, especially at low settings. But to be honest, I was kind of expecting the 3060 Ti to let it do a, a bit better than this. I feel like I'm actually learning something in this uh, experiment today. And on to our good PC with the cheap GPU. We got 80 FPS on average with 59 FPS 1% lows. Like holy crap, right? Uh, these figures are almost the same. The good PC with the 5950X paired with a cheap 750Ti didn't do as well as the cheap PC with the 3060Ti, but it's not that far off. The 750Ti is pulling its weight. As you can see, the GPU usage is at nearly 100%. And again, the CPU is barely doing anything, but the sum of the parts is that it's it's running almost the same as our cheap PC with the good GPU, even down to the 1% lows, which are usually more CPU dependent. Considering how much of a difference uh, there was in our first two games, I wasn't expecting to see the results this close for any of the tests, let alone GTA 5, which is a bit more CPU intensive, but it still requires a, a decent GPU to get high frame rates. Obviously, the uh, difference between them would widen if we upped the settings, but uh, down at the low end, trying to squeeze the most performance out of this hardware, which is what you should be doing with cheap old hardware like we have in both of these configs, it it's kind of cool that we ended up as close as we did here. And now, on to the most demanding game that I'll be testing today, Cyberjunk 2077. This game is both demanding on the CPU and the GPU, in my experience. So let's see how it does. We're running at 1080p with Performance FSR 2.0, all lowest settings, obviously. And I was uh, expecting better, honestly. Our CPU is pegged at 100% the whole time. The 3060Ti is more than enough to handle this game at 1080p lowest settings, but it's really held back by that weak old CPU. The GPU usage is in crazy low, so both the CPU and the GPU are working here. Well, we only manage 42 FPS on average, and it was pretty stuttery at the, as the uh, 25 FPS 1% lows show. It was playable, but obviously not ideal. As for our expensive PC with the 5950X and the dusty old 750Ti, <laughs> yeah, it's not good. Well, we got about half the FPS in the previous test. Even at these low settings with performance FSR, we only managed to get 23 FPS on average with really crappy 13 FPS 1% lows. This definitely is not playable. And then there probably isn't much you could do uh, in the settings to get it there. The 750Ti is just not going to be enough for graphically impressive modern games, no matter how much other hardware you throw at it. And then it crashed. So <laughs> there's that. Yeah, I, I think the uh, pattern is clear. Uh, for older games and CPU intensive games, you'll be fine with either a cheap PC with a good GPU or a good PC with a cheap GPU. It's kind of a coin flip as to which thing you should focus your budget on in terms of gaming performance. Even a cheap PC with an old slow i5-3570 processor can be enough uh, if you give it a, a good GPU to work with on the older titles, but uh, not for the newer titles. Our 5950X is a freaking monster of a CPU, but that 750Ti just doesn't have the graphical horsepower to get modern games to a playable state. So if you're looking to play modern games, then yeah, <laughs> as our tech tests today show you'll probably not have a great time until you can splurge on a good GPU, regardless of your other hardware. 
This wasn't a test to show you which thing you should spend your money on though. As always, you should try to build a balanced systems with a GPU that pairs well with your CPU. This was more of a thought experiment because I know there's some confusion around the topic and lots of conflicting advice out there. You know, people don't know, should I upgrade my CPU or my GPU? It's, it's an age old question. I think the takeaway from this experiment is that GPUs are important, more important than CPUs. But if you do have an old CPU, then at least you can enjoy playing a few of the less demanding, but still super popular and enjoyable games out there. And hey, there's always the seesaw upgrade path. That's what I personally do. Upgrading the CPU and platform this year, and then next year or in a few years, you upgrade your GPU, and then back to the CPU a few years after that. And this way you'll be able to stay relevant on both ends of their performance spectrum and be able to enjoy having new stuff more often without breaking the bank all at once. And that brings us to the end. I won't say that this little experiment was a smashing success, but at least we did it. And now we know that we've settled it once and for all. So now we can stop wondering and focus on other important things like uh, molecular nanotechnology. Uh, so get subscribed for my video about that, uh, whatever it is. If you liked this video, you might enjoy either my review of the 750 Ti or my review of the 3060 Ti, both of which I'll have linked uh, on the screen right now and at the top of the description below. And you can watch them right now because this video is over. I'm TechDweeb, thanks for watching, bye bye